Will NHRA Pro Stock, the factory hot rods, survive? Or will they finally be put in the grave? That's next on the Monday Morning Racer. Hello race fans, Lee Craft here with the Monday Morning Racer. Look, before we move on, would you please hit that like button, subscribe to the Monday Morning Racer as I try to keep you up to date on a wide range of topics throughout the world of motorsports. And our topic today is coming from the NHRA, the National Hot Rod Association, and in particular their Pro Stock class, also known as the Factory Hot Rods. They made a bit of history here recently, history that is more infamous than famous, and that history in which they made is this, that for the first time in almost 50 years, since 1970, Pro Stockers were not at a major NHRA national meet. Does that mean that the death of Pro Stock is near? Will Pro Stock survive the 2019-2020 seasons? Will there be ever be a 2020 or even 2021 season for Pro Stock? We're going to look at those elements in this video, I'm going to provide some solutions for Pro Stock and if we've got to put them in the grave, offer what could fill their place. It's no secret that the NHRA and their Pro Stock division, they've been sick here recently. Unhealthy to such a state that the Pro Stock class may very well be put in the grave altogether as we have understood it in the National Hot Rod Association. Again, they've lost racing dates on the 24 schedule tour of the Mellow Yellow NHRA schedule. Down from the 24 to 18, they even had to fight for the 18 because the NHRA originally intended for them to only have a 16 race season. Beyond the schedule change, they've lost their most recent champion, the youngest champion in NHRA's history at the pro levels, Tanner Gray, 19 years of age, has moved on to circle track racing and is currently racing in the k and East and West divisions of NASCAR and doing fairly well. He had a second place finish at Irwindale Speedway earlier this year. But you've lost dates. You've lost a champion. You have also lost a connection with the fans. Most fans see the Pro Stock class now as just a rich boys club that they can no longer connect with. When was the last time you saw fans flock to the pits to look at Pro Stock cars? When was the last time that you saw fans flock to the stands to watch Pro Stock run down the quarter mile? I recall the last time in which I was at a NHRA national meet, the Southern Nationals, about four years ago that I was saddened. The reality is that people do not stay in the stands for Pro Stock any longer. I love Pro Stock. I want to see Pro Stock thrive and move forward and have hopefully another 50 years within NHRA racing. But at this point right now, doesn't seem like that's going to happen. I can remember the glory days of people of my own time going to the stands to watch Pro Stock run down the quarter mile and the great show that they would put on. I recall one time at Atlanta Dragway, Warren Johnson was doing some tire testing on a Saturday with the regular bracket program and there were times that he wasn't even making a full quarter mile pass in this tire testing and every time his pro stock would fire up you would see people run in haste to get to the stands to see him make sometimes just a half track pass. People just do not seem interested no longer in pro stock. It's sick and sick to the point that it's almost about to be put in the grave. Folks, you know that it is serious when the NHRA puts away for five events its own style of pro stock racing and in turns brings in mountain motor pro stocks. 
I have nothing against Mountain Motor Pro Stocks. I think they put on a great show. I love watching Mountain Motor Pro Stocks. But that was a form of racing that you found in the IHRA and it has also been recently found in the PDRA. I can recall at Red River Raceway above Shreveport, Louisiana, watching the first time I'd ever seen Mountain Motor Pro Stock run and being in awe that they were running so high above 200 miles per hour and so low in the sixes at the time compared to NHRA Pro Stock. Here's the issue though. For those sanctioning bodies, that is a unique item on their card as a racing event. And here you have NHRA realizing that their form of pro stock is not doing well, it's not performing well, not connecting with the fans. Oh, let us go out and let's rob PDRA, let's rob anyone else of their show and their car and put on our platform, even though the NHRA for years stuck up its nose to what Mountain Motor Pro Stocks were doing. I think that's wrong. And I think the NHRA needs to keep their hands off of such things as Mountain Motor Pro Stock and allow them to run the other sanctioning bodies that they're running in and they'd be successful there and NHRA fix their division under their rules. Let me give you some solutions. Some of the hallmarks of NHRA Pro Stock when you look at the rules in general are as follows. They are to be naturally aspirated, electrically fuel injected. They are to imitate their original equipment manufacturer's parts and pieces. They as well are to be limited to 500 cubic inches while being manually shifted. When it comes to solutions, Three solutions that I'm going to provide are as follows. Aesthetics, manufacturers, and then characters of the drivers themselves. I think one of the biggest issues that ProStock has right now is that they are not living up to the stock element of their name when it comes to the OEMs because these modern day Pro Stocks, in my opinion, do not look like anything compared to their showroom counterparts. And that is a serious issue. When the fan that is in the stands looks at a car and is in a state of bewilderment, and that doesn't look anything like the car that's on the showroom floor or on the street, you have a problem. And this has been felt by many other forms of motorsports. For example, NASCAR with the car of tomorrow, they realized that they needed to step back to a car that had greater brand identity. And they did that with the Generation 6 car, and many fans, including me, were hoping that NASCAR takes even further steps with the Generation 7 car that's upcoming, and it has greater brand identity. And I think for NHRA Pro Stock to survive, it needs to tackle brand identity. Let me give you some examples of a modern day pro stock compared to a pro stock of what I would consider the golden days of the class, the 80s and the early 90s. So, at this moment, let's take a look at a modern day showroom example of the Chevy Camaro. Looking now at a stock version of the Chevrolet Camaro, recognize these points with this vehicle. It has sharp, crisp lines throughout its bodywork. The front end has layers and indentions. The rear end, recognize that the trunk lid is nearly parallel to the ground. Take a mental snapshot of this car as we now turn our attention to the Pro Stock version. When we look at the Pro Stock version here built by RJ Race Cars Incorporated, though it is a beautiful racing machine, I think it does fail in imitating its stock cousin. 
Where have the sharp, crisp lines gone? Look at the front end here. The layers and the indentions, they've been smoothed out and brought together. When we look at it from the rear end, you will recognize that the deck lid is no longer parallel to the ground, but rather it continues to slope downward, running into the spoiler, and it's also been extended. I don't think the Chevrolet Camaro as a Pro Stock looks that bad, though, though it does fail at imitating its stock version. I think the worst offender is currently the Ford Mustang. Looking now at the Ford Mustang, recognize again, sharp, crisp lines throughout this vehicle. You have layers and indentions in the front end, particularly with the headlights being laid back and set back on this vehicle. You have, again, the rear deck lid is nearly parallel to the ground, and it's a rather short deck lid as well considering the overall length of the car. Stepping away from the stock version, let's now look at the Pro Stock version. When we look at the Pro Stock version, again, I think it is a beautiful racing machine, but it miserably fails at imitating the stock version. Look how smoothed off that nose piece is compared to the stock version. The rear end, again, very similar to the Camaro, it has this sloping, swooping design that continues to go downward towards the ground instead of ever coming to a hard angle stop and is parallel to the ground. Overall, when you look at the modern pro stock car, I think they fail at imitating the stock version. They've lost the stock essence of their nature. Let me now juxtapose the modern pro stock car with a pro stock car from what I would consider the golden age of this particular division within the NHRA, and that's the 80s and early 90s. First, let's look at Bob Glidden and his Ford Thunderbird. Now looking at Bob Glidden's pro stock car from the mid 80s, recognize that this car is not smoothed out. Rather, you have original grille pieces on this racing car. You have original headlights on this racing car. You have an original roof line and deck lid on this racing car. It succeeds at imitating the manufacturer's stock version of the Ford Thunderbird. Keep in mind this picture of Bob Glidden's Ford Thunderbird as we actually look now at the stock version. Boom! They look nearly identical. Certainly, I understand one's a race car and one is a street car, but on the outside, you can't tell a difference. You can tell, though, from any other car at that time at the drag strip that Bob Glidden is driving a Ford Thunderbird. It is not a Chevrolet. It is not a Dodge. It is not any other maker model. It is a Ford Thunderbird, and you can connect with that. Now, let's move on and take a look at what I think is one of the most beautiful pro stock cars that there ever was, and that's the Oldsmobile Cutlass in the early 90s. Here, a great Jerry Haas built race car piloted by Greg Thomas. Recognize the lines that this car has. This car does not look anything like the Thunderbird. Beyond the similarities of a hood scoop and a spoiler, it is distinct in its styling, unlike modern day pro stocks that they all seem to look similar. Keep the picture in mind of this race car, and now let's look at the stock version. Wow, they look exactly the same. Sure, one's lower. Sure, one sits on a tube chassis and has big slicks in the rear end, but the front end, it remains with the protruding bumper and the laid back set in headlights and you have a deck lid that is still nearly parallel to the ground and the roof line, even with the big back window, is maintained in the Pro Stock version. So as my first solution for NHRA Pro Stock, I firmly believe they have to get these cars back to the point where they truly imitate their stock cousins. The Aesthetics have to be dealt with for the class ever to succeed again and connect with fans. Fans in the stands need to clearly be able to look at a race car with or without decals on it and go, that is a Ford. 
That is a Chevrolet. That is a Dodge. And that is possibly some other manufacturer. Which brings me to my second solution. I believe the NHRA needs to work with other manufacturers and bring them back into the sport. I certainly want all the current participating manufacturers in the Pro Stock division to remain and even step up their participation. GM right now has a great Chevy presence, but I would love for them to bring Buick, as an example, back to run down the quarter mile. Ford, they need to step up their game that we would see more Ford Mustangs currently in the 16 car field, and Dodge needs to do the same thing as well. But I think the NHRA does not need to ignore the current state of affairs when it comes to the car world. It is more interconnected and international than it ever has been. When you buy an American nameplate car, it's just that, a nameplate. It has been assembled and made, manufactured with parts and pieces from around the world. You are possibly even buying a American nameplate car even though it was assembled in another country. But you can buy a foreign nameplate car and it possibly was assembled right here in the United States of America. So moving forward, I do think the NHRA, they need to open up the class and avail it to other manufacturers. Now with doing that, I believe they also need to reconfigure the limitation of 500 cubic inches with a V8 style engine. They need to allow for other combinations. And this is not unheard of. It was attempted in the past, though it eventually was squashed and we haven't seen anything like it since. In the mid-80s, in particular 1986, Buddy Ingersoll, with his Buick Regal, was powered by a Buick V6 turbocharged McLaren engine that was based on IndyCar technology brought to drag racing. And at a time, it wasn't that big of a deal. Buddy wasn't qualifying for races, obviously wasn't winning rounds, but when the combination was finally found to deliver the power to the track for it to go down the quarter mile, he started besting the Mountain Motor Pro Stocks of the IHRA at the time, because NHRA wasn't going to have anything to do with this Buick turbocharged V6. The IHRA allowed him to run. Eventually, he starts making fields, and not only does he make fields, but in 1986 at Bristol Dragway, he almost beat Bob Glidden in the finals in that pro stock class. After that, amazingly, the car was disallowed and you didn't see this pro stock run again. And ever since, we've had what we have had with pro stocks in NHRA and the IHRA. I definitely think for the future of the pro stock division in the NHRA, for it to become the premier class again of pro stock racing and to become an, again a fond favorite of fans at NHRA National Meets, you need new manufacturers with different combinations. For example, folks, right now, Ford, they have a turbocharged V6 that's running in their cars in IMSA. They need to be able to bring that technology to the drag strip and it compete along with other combinations and manufacturers. I think this can be done and I think it would bring back to Pro Stock an element, again, of stock and manufacturer participation that the manufacturer's combinations in their production cars would be showcased and therefore you get the principle again of these cars looking like their stock version, of running combinations similar to their stock version that you win on Sunday and sell on Monday. Now for my third solution. 
The third solution deals directly with the drivers themselves. The fact of the matter is, the drivers of the pro stock class within NHRA, they have got to connect with fans. They've got to connect over social media. They've got to have programs that connect with the fans. They've got to have better hospitality at the tracks, in the pits. They have got to reach out to the fans. In fact, I would go so far to say that the pro stock division they need their John Force to create some charisma and energy and draw people over to Pro Stock and see what is happening there. We need the occasional ruffling of feathers as Tanner Gray was doing with Erica Enders. We need more ladies like Erica Enders in the Pro Stock division. We need rivalries. We need again some burn downs and staging duels on the line and some altercations at the end of track being mad over over what happened at the starting line. We need every now and then a NHRA starting official to back those pro stocks back up just like Buster Couch did and create that drama. We need life in this class once again and life is going to come from the people behind the wheel. Now, very quickly, those being my three solutions, aesthetics, manufacturers and combinations along with the characters, the drivers themselves. But if NHRA Pro Stock does not survive and it is put in the grave of Pro Stock classes and divisions, this is what I believe needs to happen. Promote Pro Mod to a full 24 race schedule with NHRA National Meets or, and I personally would rather see this, promote factory stock to pro status and run a full 24 race schedule at NHRA National Meets. If you have not looked at what factory stock is, it really, that class harkens back to what pro stock was, even some gasser elements, while you can go pick one of these cars up at the factory of Ford, GM, and Dodge. I love factory stock. They've got the big wheel stands, a lot of power, running eight seconds in the quarter mile. I think they are a great class. If you have not taken a look at factory stock, go take a look at them. I would highly consider them to be a replacement for Pro Stock in the future. Please, at this time, hit the like button for this video. Comment below in the comment section. I want to hear from you your thoughts on NHRA Pro Stock. Will it survive? Will it not survive? What would be some of your solutions and what classes would you like to see promoted if NHRA Pro Stock does not make it? I'm Lee Craft, host of the Monday Morning Racer, and until next time, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal.